Hello, this is Claude. I'm um, doing a re-recording of a presentation I made uh, last week with um, Jennifer and David from Turnitin um, on how we use some of the maybe less known part of the LTI specification to achieve a, an integration between MindTap and Turnitin. So Turnitin, first a few quick words. Um, Turnitin is really to help, is a tool that helps uh, students um, write better and mostly it's known for its plagiarism detection. So it's going to be able to give you an originality report, uh, digging in a huge data set uh, to check how original is a piece of, is, a piece of um, is an essay, for example, and provide useful feedback therefore for the instructor and student. And so we want to use this tool in some of our products. So MindTap on the other hand is the uh, courseware platform, so the full course assembly. And when we build a course, uh, our content people like to choose the right tool for the right course, and for example, in an English writing uh, course, you would, it would make sense to use Turnitin. So, but since those are deep integrations, they really need to be to feel like as a part of the course. So, an interesting thing here is that MindTap is a full course platform. So, in a way, it can be seen almost as a specialized learning management system. Is that it offers a full course and a full course experience, which can be accessed standalone. So in which case you go to MindTap, and from MindTap you go to the actual apps inside MindTap um, through LTI. And again, we need to do a rich integration. Sometimes we need to go above LTI, so that's why I would say LTI++, and internally we called it the MindApp API, because we tend to refer to the tools we put into a MindTap as mind apps, but really in the LTI world it would be two providers. But often MindTap is also accessed through another LMS, so in a way, it's kind of a Russian doll here. So because the student would go first into the LMS, uh, which would be the tool consumer, and then into MindTap through LTI. So MindTap in that world is a tool provider. But from MindTap, you would go, for example, here to Turnitin. So it goes back to, turn, to, to beginning to consumer and back to a Turnitin. So a bit of a Russian doll construct here. But anyway, so we are going to really to focus on this relationship here, uh, the LTI, uh, to what we've done in this world, MindTap to Turnitin. So the, the base ingredients for that is obviously LTI 1.1. So LTI 1.1 um, gives you the key information about the context of the user, who the user is, which course, what role, and um, where to post back a grade, and uh, give us a mean to return a single grade right, for this user. So that's the basic of LTI 1.1. But that's um, not enough uh, for us to really achieve the uh, integrations we're looking after. So we go through a few of the issues we had and how we solved them. So for example, one issue that we had is that we wanted to let the instructor within uh, Turnitin to be able to upload and submit a grade on the student's behalf. That means the student has never actually launched the um, activity from MindTap. And in a pure LTI 1.1 world, this is not really doable because we are lacking the LIS with our source ID. So, here in this world, so in the pure LTI 1.1 world, the uh, tool provider would only discover a, an assignment when it's actually, actually launched for the first time and would only uh, get the grade locator, which is the LAS result source ID, when the student launches. So here, Cornelius has launched, therefore, the tool provider has the grade locator, the LAS result source ID, to allow to post back a grade for Cornelius. But there's no way to send a grade back to Brenda because it doesn't even know Brenda exists just yet. He's only seen Cornelius. And here now Brenda launched here, so now it launches another assignment, so we discover assignment B. But again, we can now post a grade for Brenda, but only for assignment B. We cannot post a grade for uh, Brenda in assignment A because, again, we don't have the LIS with our source ID, which allows us to, look, to post a grade into the tool consumer gradebook. So now with the membership service, uh, it gives us two things. So the first thing, kind of abuse, the membership service gives you the roster. So, uh, so the difference here is that in the LTI payload, you're going to get the membership URL. And as a tool provider, now you can query the tool consumer and say, give me your roster. And so then now you have the full roster for that course. But uh, there is a little extra thing that it's actually giving you, is that when you're asking for the membership, uh, for the membership data, you can specify in addition as a parameter a resource link ID. And you're basically saying to the tool consumer, give me the membership within the context of that link. So here I'm just going to say, 
give me in the context of assignment A. What is that going to give you? It's going to give you all the members. And in some LMSs, it might mean only the members that are actually assigned to this activity, which is not our case, but it's also another possibility. But it's going to give you also the LIS with the source ID for all those users. So therefore, here by asking that, you, you get all the grade locators for this assignment. And if you do the same query now for this assignment, then you would get all the uh, LIS with the source ID. So this way now, you could discover all the grade locators, and you should be able now, as an instructor, to actually um, send a, set a grade into the provider for students that has never actually touched the activity and send a grade back to the host grade book. So, and one little thing also is to keep the membership in sync can be somewhat expensive. So there is a, a mechanics in the specification to say, just give me what changes last time I called you. So the difference is URL. So basically the first time you get the full membership and then subsequently you just use the differences URL to basically get all, only the changes that happened since last time you queried. So that's the Membership Service API, which has been final since May 2016. And I can give you a quick demo on how that works. So here, if I go to MindTap, and I'm going to create a fresh new Turnitin activity. In here. So that's our QA server here. So this is fresh new. Turn it in activity. Yeah, back 21 point. Submit. I'm just going to put it at the top here and give it some due date. And save. And so it's just brand new. Obviously, not a single student has ever touched it just yet. So I'm going to launch it. And through the membership service, now Turnitin is able to get the membership here and display the students enrolled in this course. And here they are, the three students in that course. Even though, again, not any, not any single student actually used it just yet. And not only that, I'm able to upload um, a file on the students. Yeah, so let me pick a file. And that's our QA server, so it's taking a little bit of time. Here it is. So I'm going to accept the submission and actually go, I can actually um, grade it also now. I can go see, have a look at it. And I can give it um, a grade, so it's 20. All right, and so now if I go to our grade book, And look for this fresh new activity that says that I have a submission 20, which 95%, which is a 20 out of 21, right here. So again, so you see here, fresh new activity, students have never touched it, yet I could discover the member, the enrollment, and as an instructor, I could push a grade. Um, so that's basically what membership gives us, enrollment and the ability to, to discover grade locators. So that's how we fulfilled one of our requirements using a um, not so well-known uh, specification, which I, but I think it's a specification that is worth pushing for. So another flow we would want to improve is the add flow. So actually we just saw me adding uh, a turn it in activity, but the UI you've seen to add the activity was actually a UI we had to build. And what we would really want is when, when we say add an activity, uh, we would actually go directly uh, to the Turnitin UI and not to our, U, to our own little UI. So that's again a limitation with the basic LTI. So really the basic LTI flow is that you create a link first in the tool consumer space. And this link has a unique ID, globally unique ID, at, at least unique in, 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 into the learning management system. But this link is just a link with an ID that has no state. It has no, nothing bound to it. And it's only when, you, as an instructor, when you first click, click on the link, then you can actually attach it to something. So, and in that case, uh, basically the view, as in, as the view and the add and the update in the basic LTI world is the same thing. You, you create on first 
time you go there. And so what we want is actually instead of that an, a proper specific ad flow, which is different from launching the, acti uh, launching the link. So we want that when a link is created, a link is already defined. So one way we, we uh, approached it to begin with is that uh, Turnitin allows a set of custom parameters to be put on a link definition. So that's what we used. So we just put a few key elements on the uh, custom parameters. So mostly the title, the description, max points, very little, the one you've seen before. And that's enough to bootstrap a, a default assignment definition with the default settings. Uh, and But we still had to build this little UI to collect this information in, in a user-friendly way. What we would really want is the ability to actually, when we say add, to directly go to turn it in. And that's basically a new message type. So it's not the basic LTI launch. It's a content item selection request, which is can let us do exactly that. With a content item selection request, you actually have a ad, specific ad flow where you go from the tool consumer to the tool provider and says, I want to add one or multiple piece of content. And in, our, in what we care, this piece of content is LTI links, but it could be used for other kinds of content. And so it's a new message type, and it has a content item return URL because it's a web flow, it's a UI flow. You go to the tool. In the tool, you create the thing or pick the things, and you return to complete the uh, addition into the tool consumer. So you go there. You, whatever in it in, you would be able to create the assignment. The assignment would then be returned as a JSON payload back to uh, the tool consumer, so back to MindTap. And in that case here, uh, it's actually a bunch of custom parameters, and the custom parameters are just opaque to the tool consumer, to MindTap. It's just stored and will be sent back on every launch. Uh, but we, we don't look at what's inside it because it's up to the, it's from the uh, tool provider consumption. And then we have a line item section. And line item in the IMS world means a gridbook colon. So this tells me, well, this is a bunch of custom parameters. This is the title, the text. But also, I want a grid book column for, for that. It's a gradable activity. And it's going to be worth, in that case here, 41 points. And here is a URL to go when I click on it, basically. So that allows us now to create the link in MindTap. Um, so a little particularity of the Turnitin approach is that uh, usually, uh, when we use a content item selection request, the entity is fully created on the two provider side, and what's written as custom parameters is more an identifier of the activity, like an activity ID or something like that. But here, uh, it's more of a lazy creation, so they're going to, to send us as custom parameters a bunch of attributes of the assignment, and they're going to use them when the activity is actually launched for the first time. So uh, it's all the parameters are stored for, for the creation of the assignment are stored as custom parameters, and when you click on it, it becomes, it's, it's lazily created on the Turnitin side. So again, the content item selection request uh, specification delivered in May 2016, and it's getting wider and wider support in LMSs. So I can do a quick demo here again. So if I go and add an activity, I can see uh, now that um, I've created an, an alternate way to create it, and now this is using the content item selection request. So we can inspect here, and I can say I want to launch um, into Turnitin, and this is, you see now this UI here is actually a Turnitin UI, and so it looks a little bit like the one we had before, So, but this would be created using content item selection request. So and a grade, and you know, date start and end date. But also here, because it's turned it in UI, they can go and put all the settings they uh, actually um, want in here. You know, that's totally the tool provider world. So we see here that we, that was actually initiated with a content item selection request. If I can find it, and the parameters. You see here the parameters, and it's going to see that the message type was, if I can find it, the message type was a content item selection request. And it has a return URL somewhere here, right? So the return URL that says where to go once you've done your creation. So I'm, I'm done here. I'm going to um, submit. 
and we see that we land back in main tab and I can create I can save it at the top here now we have the we have the activity so here we have the uh, contact data time selection return so we can look here for the form data so it's been signed and here is the actual payload content items and it's a bit of a blurb here so we can just try to copy that is this a copy and move it to um, put it in here beautify it and here we see as uh, the actual payload so that's um, that's a content item uh, and that contains all the parameters that are uh, uh, that I've selected and would allow turn it into recreate the activity at first launch. So that's the content item selection request. And now for seeking dates. Actually, seeking dates is, is always a bit of a tricky thing and because you can define dates in the tool provider. Uh, we've seen it actually in Turnitin where you can actually set dates. But you can also set dates in the tool consumer platform. And actually, it's very important, usually in LMSs, to be able to set dates. And often you have tools like batch uh, edit of dates to move a bunch of dates one week or another to another. But then it's hard to keep those in sync because you can define dates into provider and into consumer. So we want half the way through with uh, Turnitin. So Turnitin allows the tool consumer uh, to pass dates. And if dates uh, are passed, as a custom parameter, which the custom parameter has to be due date. If you pass the due date, then turn it in, we say, okay, if you're passing me the due date, I will show it in my tool, but I will not allow them to be modified in my tool. So basically, if uh, the platform decides to, to send the, the dates to the Turnitin platform, it, it really indicates to Turnitin, so you should be read only because only one of us can control the dates. And so since you're passing it to me, I imply you are controlling it. So that's the way it was solved. So it's a kind of a one-way thing. It's a, every lunch, every LTI lunch will contain the custom due date, and Turnitin will, will update the XT assignment um, accordingly, uh, and will not allow those to be changed from within the Turnitin world. So I have no need for a demo for that. And uh, finally, course copy. So course copy. Is tricky in particular in a pure LTI 1 1 world. So, in a pure LTI 1 1 world, again, you create a link. This link on first creation is attached some state on, on the other side. So, but now when you copy your full course, when you copy your course, uh, then a link ID always changes, and that can be kind of an issue. So, in this world here, the link ID gets a new. ID, which is totally opaque for the tool provider. I have no idea how it could be a GUI generation, totally random, we don't know. So it's just a, a new link, and that means this is just a blank new link, and when you go on the other side, they'll, hey, what is it about? You, you just don't know. And so there is no way to, to do a copy on the tool provider side the same way the copy was done on the tool consumer side. And so it which usually means that the uh, instructor would have to rebuild, even if the link already exists, has to rebind some state behind the link. So to go around that, there is, there is um, uh, a new uh, variable substitution parameter called resource link ID history. So what does it give you? It gives you the history of all the um, resource links. Uh, so in that world, you would know that uh, the resource link ID, uh, this is the um, 98IU2545 is actually a copy of 28A380 and it would allow you now to copy it on your site too. History chain, so you would know that uh, 98IU2545 is a copy of 28A380 which is itself a copy of 8901. So this way you can basically copy and if by any chance you don't have 28A380 on, in your world because the user never clicked on that link. And you can go look look at the one before. So we see here in the, that we pass it uh, to turn it in, uh, so that they can copy the proper def settings from one course to another when the, when on a per link basis. And you have the same thing for context ID history. So that's kind of it uh, of what we use now. But I think with what's coming up with LTI, we could hopefully write a much bigger book in the future of what else we've used. Um, so for example, uh, one thing we, we need to do is we, grid reporting is not 
good enough for us. We need to know when a student has submitted, because when a student has submitted, only then can we actually uh, say the instructors that the grading is required. So we need to, to capture the state uh, of the activity. And um, right now, Jonathan uh, provides some kind of extension to LTI that that we could that we could use using some kind of adapter. So basically, we adapt the um, Jonathan API to our API. But that's out, out of specification. So tomorrow, the grade service, the grade book service, is going to give us more information about the score. And so it's not just going to be just a grade. You're going to be able to, to give some state. And so you're going to give, be able to give two kinds of states. What is the activity state? So is the activity in progress or completed? So in this case, when a student submits, then yes, it would, we would send a score saying this score is submitted. But we also give us the ability to specify grading progress. So, uh, so it's not because it's submitted that it is graded. So what you could say here is that, okay, it's submitted, but it's pending a grade. And it's pending a manual grade. That means it's pending manual intervention. So this way, we, uh, the um, tool consumer, so MindTap and tomorrow over LMSs, should, should be able to indicate in the gradebook that this assignment has been submitted by the student and is now requiring um, instructor grading so that the, student can, the instructor can actually go and uh, grade the, um, the submission. So that's one thing that's coming up, but even more things are in the pipeline. So another thing is, uh, okay, now you know that you need to grade as an instructor, but how do you go to grade? And the ability to click on a grade from the gradebook and go to the tool provider uh, grading interface. Uh, and same thing for a student to be able to go from the gradebook to feedbacks. So that would be the gradebook launch. That's also a specification that's coming up. Then you would want to do two-way things of dates. And for that, there might be over some, some solutions that might come up, um, like a content item service, which would allow you to query dates from the tool consumer, from a tool provider standpoint, and also maybe some notification. Then there is the edit flow. So the edit flow is like the content item selection request, but not to add, but to edit. So very similar specification, but now it allows you to edit a link rather than add a link. Then there is um, the ability to know, you know, you go to the tool provider, your internet is, user does a bunch of things, but it's, you don't know what's happening in there. So that's why you have Caliper. And Caliper profile for session uh, engagement and assignment to get events uh, so that you're able to actually see what's happening within the tool and do some kind of aggregation in the tool consumer or at the institution level. Then there is the ability to do more than one grade by activity because Turnitin allows you to do peer review. And peer review is some kind of a secondary grade. So you have the main grade, but then you have your peer grades. And for that, we would need two gradebook columns. And with the gradebook service, you, you are able to actually have more than one line aid to push new grades into that. So you see that's a, a rich integration, that's a rich integration is possible now with LTI, but it's getting, getting even more possible with all the specification that's, that's basically being very, either directly available, like membership and content item selection request, or the, or the ones that are coming up. Um, and so the first thing is to be aware that the specification exists. Because, unfortunately, the status is that the specification we've seen here, uh, I was, we were able to make use of them in MindTap as a tool consumer and uh, turn it in as a tool provider because we wanted to use those. But as a tool provider yourself, the support in LMSs is going to be scarce right now. So the thing is that, first of all, is that is to know the specification exists, possibly contribute ideas to that back to the IMS. But um, it's also knowing the specification exists, you can actually push for adoptions on the LMS side. And also, if you build, if you cannot really wait for support in the LMSs, at least be aware of those and maybe build your platform in a way that would make them, um, that would make it easy to transition to the, um, to the specification. And obviously, uh, the idea is to resist the, uh, quote, ease to go with um, platform-specific API as much as possible. Uh, again, sometimes you don't have choice, but uh, um, ideally, um, those specifications 
uh, by bringing up awareness of those, uh, they, they are getting more and more likely to, to become ubiquitous in the main LMSs um, that, uh, that exist. Thank you.